guys and welcome back to another video. But today for you, I have a different reaction. I have an old reaction. So it means like one that a match that has already been played. So let me get my uh, school stuff on. School stuff off, I mean. <laughs> and let's turn on the TV. Yeah? What? What happened? So guys, I'm gonna go on YouTube and check if there's like a, like a good reaction I could do, like a full match replay. I'm gonna keep doing these, you know, guys. It's gonna be sick, like lit, bruv. I'm gonna see if I can find one on Prime Video, but if I can't. No, it's on YouTube. Hello? Please say that's not your new math teacher in a heap. Yes, of course it is. Mm, that's my re mom, I'm, yeah, oh, you're right, on my okay. reaction. Should like a. You, I won't wear that one today. You'll be but that. You'll look silly. I'll just have that in the bag for dad. Okay. You'll be too hot, honestly. We don't talk about Bruno. Uh, Full match replay. Getting that from YouTube. You will sort that out. Yes. <laughs> I love you. Where have you put YouTube? Oh my god. You're what? What did I say to you when you put your stuff? So you whisked it on a chair. Yeah. I'm just going to walk Bella. Right. So there's no match on tonight? No. Mm. And New England playing tomorrow? I think so. <laughs> you have no clue. No. So what are you recording just you playing? Just full game? match replay. Let's 
So guys, the format for everybody we're going to do is do you want to spin it now? It, it oh, I don't know. Do you want me to do it now? Chelsea vs Leicester? I don't know. I don't know what to pick. Portsmouth 7 4 Reading. Jesus Christ. I'm trying to see. I've already done that much, so. Uh, I don't know, there's so many to pick from. I think that's a good one. A the ball is caught it. But. Right, guys, I will do Chelsea versus Man United. Oh! Are female athletes sexualized? Questions that they are asked by journalists are always about the way they look, and it's not actually about their performance. Right. Fernandez. Signal. the first and the players who believe will take the knee. Take the knee. Strong message around the world. Marcus Rashford there. With the right fist raised. It means so much to the players uh, for England Fernandez. and around the world. Yeah. Off we go. The yeah. second the FA Cup semi-finals this season for the right to play Arsenal. Here again, the start of August, William for Chelsea, a little touch for Rhys James, and it was uh, had too much power on it, so we're now to play for a throw in to Manchester United, taken by Brandon Williams. He had to see yesterday whether or not uh, he could see properly with his uh, injured eye. I think it's the left. And, uh, he's OK to play. Now, here's Bruno Fernandes to find Rashford. It's operating on the left-hand side. Nero has come a long way out of goal and has to <laughs> head it away. Well, I think probably Rashford and James are going to play as a front two and Fernandes is going to play just in behind them. As for their back three, oh, he's going to be on the right-hand side. Maguire in the middle, Lindelof on the left. Now, earlier on in the, in the run at Tranmere, it was uh, Maguire who played on the left-hand side. They, they, they uh, worked really well that day and... Uh, Rattled in six goals. Here's Maguire, whose goal late on won the quarter-final game at Carrow Road, Norwich. Manchester United made hard work of it in the end. By injury, ravaged season for him, of course. Only one league start in 2020. It's been for a long, long while following the knee operation in February of last year. Fred, who set a decent spell in the cup. This is his fourth start in this run. Matic, of course, was a, a Chelsea player and two stints at the club. He was on the bench when they won this competition a decade ago. There he is. That's for Young Williams again. He's not missed a game in this run. Yeah. Although right. Rashford is playing up front with James, he's going to drip. Full match replay 2020-21. Getting that from YouTube. What, what? What happened there? Focus on Raheem Sterling, who's been challenged publicly by Pep Guardiola in the last couple of days. Almost there. Get your
your act together, Cole. Here's a chance to do just four match the replay 2020 21. Getting that from YouTube audience taking. Well, what's happening here, idiot? Emphasizing. Oh, this is so odd. I think the no room for racism message. So we're underway. It's the seventh FA Cup meeting between these two, four in the last nine seasons. Chelsea won the first back in 1915 and the most recent in 2016. And City successful in the four in between, including a semi final here eight years ago. Well, straight away you saw Man City trying to press Chelsea really high up the field. A place at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-finals is the prize. Manchester United get the game underway in their famous red shirts, playing from right to left in the first half. And they've won both of the previous two meetings in the FA Cup, including the final back in 1963. And also a fifth round tie at the old Filbert Street Mom? back in 1976 when United went all the way to Wembley and were knocked out by Southampton in the final. Matt Holland is alongside me for this one and it's interesting to see how a much changed United team really coped with the Leicester side who in recent times have had a good deal of continuity. Yeah, they have. I mean, they changed their formation a little bit, Leicester. They've went to a back three and they've gone with Ian Acho and Vardy up top and it worked well against Sheffield United. That's something that Man United will have to deal with. That's for United. They've freshened it up and I think that's important. Five changes from that win in midweek in the Europa League. Just some fresh legs on the pitch. And it's a big game for certain individuals. I think Van der Beek in particular. And he struggled to impose himself in this United lineup. Of course, he's got a lot of competition and Bruno Fernandes has been outstanding for United but he really has to try and take the games by the scruff of the neck when he gets the chance here is Pogba looking for Martial van der Beek here is Martial support from Tellez on the overlap but the pass was slightly behind him Martial once again now Pogba already looking to pull the strings Greenwood Saka, Fred. Saka continues, but he runs into Perez. Quickly won back though by Matic. Matic was looking for Tellez, but Leicester worked very hard when out of possession. Inacio was the target of that ball forward, but Matic was there to redeem his original error. Was the player who was bowled over and Craig yeah, Lawson, our referee, has given the free kick. I think when we watch United, they do oh, tend to gravitate, and most of their attacks do come down the left hand side. Tellers is in for Luke Shaw today, and Rashford's not available. Pogba on that side. Martial playing up top, he likes to drift out to the left as well. And most of United's attacks do come down the left. Southampton, Manchester City, and Chelsea are already into the semi-finals the draw takes place at half time in this game so very soon both these sides will know their potential Tellez. opponents at Wembley Tellez Maguire. Maguire this transfer from Leicester to Manchester United was a world record for a defender Johnny Evans, the former United central defender. The announcer was caught by Tellez and it will be a free kick to Leicester. Five goals in three games for Kalecci, Ian Acho, and as a former Manchester City player, he has personal motivation today as Perez pokes it on for Vardy, looking for Ian Acho and his hot streak almost continued there but it was a terrific covering challenge for Alex Tellers. I think the flag might have gone up belatedly. Vardy always on the shoulder. I think he was offside. 
as soon as it was played, Harry Maguire looked to the linesman. He was hoping for the flag. It didn't come. It's excellent covering from Tellez. Maguire was right. He was a couple of yards offside. United, he looked to be much more comfortable going forward as they're still looking for the free kick. It has continued. Here is Perez. Soyonchu. And indeed, he will eventually play the ball out of play. Heavy touch, wasn't it, from Martial? Tried to rectify it, lunged in and did catch Tielemans. Every time a Leicester City player crumples to the turf at the moment, there's an intake of breath in the technical area. They've had such bad luck with injuries recently. Missing key players, aren't they? Madison, Barnes out, Ricardo now as well. James Justin, who's been excellent this season. Just a word from Craig Paulson. It was, in many ways, a typical FA Cup challenge. take the throw in. United unbeaten in their previous 29 domestic games, a run stretching all the way back to January of last year when Liverpool beat them by two goals to nil. Martial tumbles under the challenge of Fofana. Now Perez and Didi. He sidesteps Pogba. Tielemans. All Brighton. Tielemans again and it's beyond both Ian Atcher and All Brighton. Not quite got going yet, Leicester. Slow start to the game from them. Leicester aside looking to reach their first semi finals since 1982. And their previous semi final victory was a bizarre game when they beat. Shrewsbury Town by five goals to two at Filbert Street. Gary Lineker was on the score sheet due to an early injury to their goalkeeper Mark Wallington. Three different players were involved in goal for Leicester that day. Of course, there were no backup keepers in those days, only one player on the bench. And somehow, Leicester made it through to the semi finals where they were beaten by Spurs. You ever played in goal? I have actually, yeah. Went in goal for about a 10 15 minute spell for Ipswich against Oxford. Managed to concede one. It was quite an eventful game. Went in goal, let one in, came back on pitch, scored, then gave a penalty away. And did win 5 2 though. Sounds a very similar sort of game to the victory for Leicester the last time they got through this stage. The previous three quarter finals have all been lost to Chelsea, including here last season when Ross Barkley scored the only goal. Pogba spraying the ball around once again here is Juan Basaka so Umshu was looking to shepherd the ball behind but quickly realised that Fred was all over him next step for this man is to win a trophy I certainly think he's improved United Interesting ball. Good right in there, Will. Just about keep it in, using his old winger speed there. Playing as a right back today. Both 
Norwegian sides have already met here in the Premier League. It was a 2-2 draw at the end of December. Very entertaining game which was ultimately settled by a late own goal from Alex Twanzebe who was on the bench for United here today. Rashford and Bruno Fernandes were both on the score sheet. Harvey Barnes, who was out injured, also scored a cracking goal that day for Leicester. But Leicester have beaten Manchester United only once in the last 25 meetings, and that was a bizarre 5-3 win here back in September of 2014. I seem to remember Angel Di Maria scoring a, a wonder goal that day. Yeah, United were 3-1 up. And then... They collapsed in the second half and that was a Leicester team who were recently returned to the Premier League and somehow survived that season with a great escape. Jamie Vardy was on the score sheet that day. Kasper Schmeichel was also involved. Recently returned to the Premier League and somehow survived that season with a great escape. Jamie Vardy was on the score sheet that day. Kasper Schmeichel was also involved. He's just had to play a slightly different role in recent times. Of course, everything has gone through him for so long at Leicester City, but only one goal in 15 games. But he's not a player who shirks the challenge. Tielemans. Fred will get there before Perez. Lindelof. Van der Beek. Mambasaka. Oh. Challenge from Sir Unchu on Greenwood. I think even there. And the bait just needs to be a bit more positive. Get on the half turn, look to play forward. I think he's, he's trying to play safe, he's trying to keep the ball. But he needs to do more than that, especially if he's going to play in that number 10 role. He started only two Premier League games since arriving from Ajax, where he was very highly prized. Here is Ian Atcher. Looking to turn to the left and possibly bring Vardy into the game, but Smuggled back towards Henderson. He's quickly becoming United's number one. There was always so much discussion about if and when David De Gea may be displaced, but it's almost happened and under the radar, hasn't it, in many ways? Well, David De Gea went back to Spain. And his wife was pregnant and giving birth. And since then, Dean Henderson's done nothing wrong and deserves his place in the team. Matic. That's a good ball. Juan Basaka. Martial coming short. Now looks to wriggle his way towards the byline and he's closed down by Suonchu at the expense of the game's first corner. I think it's United that have had the better of the opening ex exchanges. They probably have a bit more of the ball. Yes, they do carry a threat on the counter, of course, but he's been heavily involved. Paul Pogba trying to get on the ball. Of course, we must have a winner here today with extra time and penalties if necessary. And that's been the way all the way through the FA Cup this season. Tellers will take the corner. Maguire is one of the targets and he's won the header but it was comfortable for Schmeichel. I don't think Harry Maguire probably scores as many goals as he should do. He often gets that first contact from corners. It's difficult one really for him to generate the power needed to beat Schmeichel on that occasion. Giannaccio has been very mobile in the channels for Leicester so far. Tielemans. So Inchu once again. Has lost out. Martial looking to use his pace. He had 
van der Beek in support. But he's lost out quickly to Ndidi, but now so Unchu played himself into trouble. And that rather frenetic spell of play has been brought to an end by Leicester and Johnny Evans. Fafana. Such is the wealth of talent available to the French system as Ian Acho chases a long ball forward. It's gathered by Henderson. Good position from the goalkeeper. Right on the edge of his box. Wesley Fofana is in the French under-21 squad for the upcoming European Championships. I'm sure he'd be in many senior teams right across Europe. He's been outstanding this season. Johnny Evans, likewise. It's funny, actually, only going to sold Shell saying United should never have sold him. Leicester's recruitment has been very good. They very rarely sign a player who doesn't make an impact. Castagna was the target of that ball there. He's been somebody else who has just slotted in. Given Brendan Rodgers something different. Still plenty to play for for him. It's competition and they're trying to finish in the top four, I think. It's going to be really important to them. Qualify for the Champions League to their league position. I'm sure that Leicester have targets overall every season. Last season probably was to finish in a European place. Of course, they were eventually picked by teams like Manchester United in the top four. But you would imagine that this season, finishing in the Champions League place was the objective. Yeah, I think so. What a place to do it as well. Good competition for that because Chelsea have come strong, West Ham going well. Van der Beek, good finding Evans, now all Brighton, Thielemans, Nacho, doing well there to move himself clear of Fred and he was looking for that ball in behind for Vardy and that's a very familiar ball for Leicester City. Tracked well actually by Victor Lindelof. Well, I think he's been in good form of late. He's been really consistent. He's kept Eric Bailly at bay. Even Solskjaer trusts him alongside Maguire. And the break, of course, starting today, but Bruno Fernandes is the, the go-to man for Manchester United in that sort of position. So many of their games. Now Perez. Vardy, Iheanacho waits in the centre, oh, it's back towards Vardy, Henderson has to make the save and it's scrambled away by Matic. He's drifting to that left-hand side, Jamie Vardy, trying to get in that channel between Juan Bissaka and Lindelof. Juan Bissaka high up the pitch on this occasion, and he gets the ball, he's actually trying to deliver the cross into the box for his strike partner. possession inside United territory now. Yeah, good spell. United started brightly. Still coming back into it. Yeah. Rising above Ian Acho. Right and back to Fafana. Now look at Solskjaer making five changes from the side which beat Milan in the Europa League. Marcus Rashford unavailable due to injury but Hopeful of joining up with the England squad for the upcoming international break. 
Greenwood continuing in the starting lineup. Now it's been won back quickly by Leicester. Here is Vardy into the penalty area. He had options left and right, and in the end, the shot was blocked by Maguire. Van der Beek. Martial. And he can't go beyond Fafana. Good defending from Fafana. Opened up nicely for Leicester at the other end. Good work defending from, from Harry Maguire. Caught in possession. A couple of times too many, Phil. You're going to Solskjaer's liking. Lindelof. Greenwood. Well, finding Pogba, who was just on the half turn, which gives him the opportunity to bring Tellez into the game quickly. He's drifting into the middle, actually, Pogba. He doesn't want to stay out wide because he wants to get involved, get on the ball. Important, therefore, that Tellez does get forward down the left. Pogba once again. Tellez was off and running, but Pogba... Going shorter to Matic and the flick doesn't quite come off. Now for Fana. Could there be an issue that United have tried to cram too many number 10s into the side today? Well, it's difficult. I mean, I think he wants to get minutes into the legs of Pogba and also for Van der Beek as well. He's played every game, actually, in the, in the FA Cup. He started every game. He wants to get him back involved as well because he's had a little niggle as well and been out, so they need minutes. It's a perfect opportunity to rest Bruno Fernandes. Marcus Rashford as well has played a lot of football this season. It's just working out the best position, really, for Paul Pogba. The way that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sets his team up, it looks like he likes two more defensive-minded midfield players. It's been Fred and McTominay for the bigger games. For with Bruno Fernandes in that number 10 position, Paul Pogba's, to get in the side, has to play on the left, really. Matic. Or the right. Over on the far side at the start of this game as Albrighton goes down. Tellez with the challenge. Interesting tussle between Albrighton and Tellez because Tellez is somebody who loves to get forward at every opportunity and Albrighton has the experience to possibly exploit that. So earns you. Matic. Now Pogba. Tielemans initially and he also shrugs off Iheanacho. Pogba's lost his boot. Slaps the turf as he doesn't get the free kick. Ian Acho quickly finding Albrighton. Tellez going to ground unnecessarily. And in the end, Albrighton's cross is deflected behind for a corner by Maguire. It's not great defending from Tellez. Diving in. Coming to his rescue. United still arguing they should have had a free kick. It did look like one. Ian Acho was clumsy. Funding through the back of Pogba and caught his boot, which eventually flew off that was a foul to me but Leicester have their first corner All Brighton will take it short to Ian Atcho Tielemans scored their winning goal in the previous round right at the end against Brighton from a short corner. It'd be much better.
better at set pieces recently after a long time in which they really failed to make the most of them. just beginning to take a grip on possession in midfield as Inacho tries to find Perez but it's cut out in the end by Henderson in fact there's not a lot in the game up a fairly even start no real great pace to it either sides have to just have a period of possession There's James Madison who's been excellent this season oh Inacho well that's an opportunity for Inacho and a defensive shambles for Manchester United allows Kelechi Iheanacho to continue his hot goal-scoring streak. It's too easy. Well, that was a gift. There's a shocker from Fred. He said that United have given the ball away too cheaply, and particularly in that midfield area. Trying to play out from the back. Leaves his goalkeeper short. Nacho reads it brilliantly. Rounds the goalkeeper. Composed finish. But United guilty of giving a cheap goal away. whatsoever there. Such a mix up. He's hoping the goalkeeper's going to come on to it. But he didn't put enough pace on the ball back to him. Leonardo with his sixth goal in just over three games. Tied up with ribbons by Fred. And he maintains his excellent goal-scoring record in the FA Cup. It's his 12th goal and his 18th tie. As Matt Holland correctly surmised, there was nothing in the game until that moment. And he's seen his side fall behind on so many occasions away from home this season, but they usually win. Well, they usually find a way to come back into the game. Uh, a horrendous error. Take nothing away from Ian Acho. He's the man in form. Actually against Sheffield United last week and he was the quickest to react. And once he got into the position, he didn't panic. Why with the back pass, Henderson allows it to run. Ian Acho's recent goal scoring burst really began in the previous round when he scored right at the end against Brighton. Time to go in this one. Fred he won't be feeling great about things at the moment. Maguire. Tellez looking for Greenwood so he should be just enough one for Saka Greenwood once again Brad's cross and Schmeichel in the end has to turn the ball aside it's a really dangerous ball in aimed towards the goalkeeper any sort of a touch makes it difficult for Schmeichel he's anticipating a touch yeah! He gets there. Yeah, I'm going to play football for a bit. Yeah, he just palms it away. I'm going to play football. have been off target anyway. Okay. Alex 
Tellez will take his second corner. The game suddenly coming to life. And it's deep from Tellez, and once again, Maguire was on the end of it, but off target on this occasion. Again, he gets the first contact. Perhaps that Leicester goal has stung United into action. And here it is. Maguire potentially could have gone longer. Fred could have done it first time. Could have put a bit more pace on the ball back to Henderson. Yeah, it's an excellent finish. I'm not too sure what sort of clarification Fred could have given to Harry Maguire there in the aftermath. For fun. Tielemans Castagna Didi That's a really growing in confidence in this game following the goal although they were just beginning to take a grip on the game before the goal Osaka has Matic in support. It's an excellent ball forward looking to exploit the face of Greenwood Evans coming across and once again that's very accomplished defender. Read it well. He's the middle of that back three for Leicester today. The one that's slightly deeper. Pogba tried to find Martial but it was Fafana who did just enough and now Iheanacho managing to isolate Maguire in the wide area and Maguire stands his ground and the free kick's been given and Andre Mariner is reaching for the first yellow card this is the benefit of the split strikers for Leicester there isolating the centre halves in wider positions and aren't comfortable facing up 1v1 situations like that Maguire did rather more than stand his ground with that outstretched arm. The ball might have got past him, the man wasn't as well. Maguire will have to manage a yellow card for the remaining hour of the game. All Brighton is over the free kick. will be one of the targets but it's short in the end Tielemans and it was blocked by Fred now Van der Beek the Dutchman with a Cruyff turn but rather worked his way into a cul-de-sac and he's given the ball away this time Maguire steps in before Ian Atcher. conference we host here generates over £1 million for Northern Ireland, for the economy and for our people. With a recent £250 million city deal investment in new medical skill, we've primed key sectors of our economy with the aim to triple employment growth and go from strength to strength. Do your bit to become an ambassador for Derry London Derry and bring your conference to this area. Saka. Nacho's record when starting FA Cup ties is superb. Ten goals in 11 games. He had a good goal scoring record in this competition for Manchester City. At the times at Leicester, he's used the FA Cup to actually get time on the field. Such has been his form, though. He's starting to play more regularly. Took advantage of a Real mix up at the back for United. So, 
Championship. There's Kasper Schmeichel. Nobody in the Leicester starting lineup has won the FA Cup, but Schmeichel's dad won a few with United. Tielemans. Leicester passing the ball around with confidence. I'd say that United aren't getting tight enough to them. United second best in this game. Yeah, Leicester were just starting to get in control, in control before the first goal. And now they're passing it nicely. They need a reaction. It's been given away by United once again. Here is Iheanacho, and he almost found Vardy Wambasaka with a crucial intervention. Well, superb from Wambasaka because. He's filled the hole that Lindelof left. Lindelof went and they run into midfield, gave the ball away, and then there was space. And Saka was quick to get across and shut that space. Tielemans. areas for fun but initially by Pogba this doesn't look good for Paul Pogba at all look of concern on the face of his manager oh, we won the ball back it looks like it's just a Stamp on the top of the foot. That's exactly what it is. Just studied across his ankle. He should be okay with that. I think the worry was that he twisted it. He was only recently back from injury. Such a stop start season for him in many ways, but the flip side of that is when it comes to the European Championships, he may have a bit more in the tank. What's been a, a really tough season, very congested, loads of games. United have had a really tough spell themselves. A couple of games against Milan in the Europa League, West Ham, Man City, had a tough period. Games coming thick and fast. Guara has been penalised once again for the challenge on Ian Acho. He'll need to be careful on that yellow card. They've isolated the centre half brilliantly. Leicester. Hardy's oh, playing on Lindelof and Ian Acho on Maguire. Simmons does well to work it wide to Albrighton despite the attentions of Van der Beek for Fana. The power of deflection finds Evans. Looking for 
Perez once again, Lindelof guided back to Henderson and this time there is no playing out from the back. Well, no chances taken that time. Plenty for them to think about though. They're getting outnumbered in the middle of the pitch. Michael Carrick on the right there and here is Pogba. Tellez, Martial shaping for the header, but no clear-cut contact from him. Juan Basaka. Tellez. Pogba shrugs off for Farner initially. And the cross will find Van der Beek. He leaves it, and the equaliser is dispatched by Mason Greenwood. First real moment of quality for Manchester United. And it's the youngster who comes up with such a crucial goal. Well, he was due one, Mason Greenwood. I think his performances have been pretty good recently. He hasn't been able to get himself onto the score sheet regularly. It's superb work from Paul Pogba to spin, get the cross in. The awareness of Van der Beek to know what's behind him as well. And then Mason Greenwood is clinical coming from that right wing position into mi the middle of the goal and smashes it past Tashbis Michael to get United back into it it's a well worked goal and it comes considerably against the run of play but that's often the way that Manchester United have played away from home this season They've got individual quality. And Paul Pogba stepped up. Brilliant skill to get himself away from Fafana. Greenwood's first goal since scoring against Liverpool in the fourth round back on the 24th of January. Leicester may be rocked back by that because they were heading towards half-time in control now Tielemans all Brighton was waiting and Tellez just happy to lift the header into a safer area Andy Greenwood's fifth goal of the season of course he was scoring for fun during the restart during last summer the pressure there from Castagna forcing Bissaka, Juan Bissaka into the challenge but it's a goal kick in the end he was a bit lazy wasn't he he's only at the last minute he became aware of Castagna got away with it the teacher's been caught Van der Beek's role in that goal shouldn't be overlooked as well if he's looking for something to build his confidence that will help Fred yeah, he, he won't get the assist for it but it was clever play Juan Basaka Robbins with the clearance Martial looking to be underneath it here is Fred now Greenwood once again and Pogba went for precision and it's comfortable for Schmeichel catch it anywhere near as cleanly as he'd like to have done intention to try and bend it start it outside the post and try and work it back but didn't get it clean in straight at the goalkeeper now Vardy all Brighton comes in he just guided away by Lindelof Andre Mariner was given the corner It's often never entirely straightforward for Manchester United away from home, but they usually find a way. 29 games without defeat domestically, of course, they were beaten in the Champions League by Leipzig, crucially, in Germany earlier during the campaign, which knocked them out on match day six. 
corner, met by Van der Beek. Tielemans, power from him once again. Now he looks for Soyuncu. Hooked away by Tellez, Iannaccio. Fred again looking to play the ball out, almost gave the ball away. In a dangerous area. in that corner still looking to try and land it on top of the goalkeeper they've got loads of bodies around Henderson Evans and Greenwood don't like Castagna Tillemans sold a deedy short but he's done well to go beyond Matic quickly forward looking for Ian Atcho, but over hit on this occasion as well at the assistant just to make sure he was on side he's been given away by Juan Basaka Castagna into some way beyond all the blue shirts in the end but United have been sloppy at times yeah they have uh, it's a combination of United being sloppy in possession and also the pressure from Leicester they're trying to squeeze United higher up the pitch Now Perez. Perez's effort is just wide. Well, he had Albrighton in support. He was not tracked into the penalty area, but Jose Perez maybe believed he was entitled to have a go from there. He's been quiet, Jose Perez. He impacted the game as much as he'd like to have done. Drifting in from that left-hand side, he gets a side on goal. He's claiming a little touch from Matic, but it was always drifting wide of that post. Disappointed his side of giving up a position of supremacy in this game. Let's all take the throw in beyond Pogba, but here it's Fred. His error cancelled out by Mason Greenwood. Martial. Now Wan Basaka. There will be a minimum of two more minutes. Lindelof. for the expansive ball which is cut out by Castagna and Leicester looking to counter attack once again Vardy it's been too much of Castagna this time Matic he's behind Pogba straight to Albrighton and it's been a very scrappy end to the half from United back though by Alex Tellez here is their goal scorer Mason Greenwood Martial yeah, I think at times one or two players having too many touches Still doing things quickly one or two touch and moving the ball dwelling on it Lindelof Shots on goal, Dean Henderson hasn't had too much to deal with. Well, neither keeper has really, have they? It's predictably tight uh, in the Premier League. Again, second in the Premier League. We anticipated it'd be close this one. There's been a lot in the game.
And it's half time. It's been a match which has been quite attritional in the main, but a number of talking points. Galecci Iannaccio with the opening goal for Leicester following an awful back pass from Fred. That was a real gift. But Manchester United pulled level by Mason Greenwood, finishing off a fine move involving Paul Pogba and Donny van der Beek. At half time, it is Leicester City 1, Manchester United 1. Leicester City get the second half underway. 1-1 here at the King Power Stadium. The Foxes in all blue, playing from right to left. And we must have a winner here today with extra time and penalties if required. Leicester made rather short work of two sides from the Championship, Stoke City and Brentford in the early rounds before their late, late winner against Brighton in round five. Manchester United have had one or two bumps in the road. It's really worked hard to see off both Watford and West Ham by goal to nil and there was that terrific tie against Liverpool which they won 3-2. They need to play better than they did in the first half. I think they were a bit slow really in that first period, didn't move the ball quick enough. I still feel a bit aggrieved that they didn't go in at half-time leading and being the better side. Soyuncu. A Leicester goal coming from an error, but United's equaliser was wonderfully made. Soyuncu has been given the time to find Castagna. Vardy waits at the far post with the cross is gathered by Henderson. He's done that a lot actually, Soyuncu today. He's allowed to get forward from that left centre half position. Side. to have that fluidity he gives players confidence to move the ball around and also take up positions which can create opportunities it's why they've been so successful over the past couple of years why Osaka able to keep the ball in play and it's been a feature of this game so far that while United have looked good at moving forward at times they've also given up possession in dangerous areas as David De Gea looks on and Didi one of those characteristic bursts from him but once again the near post Henderson was secure here is Van der Beek Two sides here today who are very adept at counter-attacking. Lindelof. Now Maguire. United looking to reach their 31st FA Cup semi-final. That would be a new record, taking them clear of Arsenal. Who are the only club who have won the Cup more than that. Is looking for his first major silverware in England. Came so close with Liverpool to winning the Premier League title. Gunnar Solskjaer won the lot with Manchester United as a player. Looking for his first trophy as a manager. Back at Old Trafford. Now Perez. Back on Van der Beek, he went down but no free kick given by Andre Mariner and now Ndidi cuts down Fred and United do get the decision. It was all action, Wilfred and Didi. Player coveted by a number of clubs in the Premier League and around the world, I'm sure. He is a player who was given time at Leicester, wasn't an instant sensation but they were patient with him and he benefited from that. He's a very keen player for them. 
great energy. Now Castagna. Blows down by Van der Beek. Edinson Cavani is on a star-studded Manchester United bench today, back after injury. There's Cavani. Ahmed Diallo, Bruno Fernandes, Daniel James. All available if required. Scott McTominay, who's been the match winner in two of the three rounds that United have played so far, is also there. Fafana. Iannaccia. Tielemans. Iannaccia was able to gather ahead of Maguire. And Didi. Castagna providing the width. up by Juan Bissaka initially the challenge came in from Greenwood but that's to keep moving here Fafana now Evans once again so on shoot United having to do plenty of chasing at the start of the second half the defensive record has been good United of late. Here is Tielemans. Vardy on the shoulder of Lindelof, but Tielemans goes for goal. And that's another terrific strike from Yuri Tielemans. <laughs> Leicester City ahead once again. And that goal was a real trademark of a Brendan Rodgers side. I was about to say that United's defensive record has been pretty good of late, but they haven't looked as secure today. Ian Nacho has given Maguire all sorts of problems. He drags Maguire out of position again. There's a big gap that appears for Tielemans, and he's allowed to travel and travel before he gets his shot away. Finds that bottom corner superbly. Henderson on the stretch, can't get there. It's not great defending from United. Team is allowed to travel a long way without being opposed. Very similar to the goal he scored against Arsenal recently in the Premier League. And if you don't close him down, he will do you damage. And a player who could be a real star for Belgium in the upcoming European Championships has put Leicester City inside of the semi-finals once again. goes that bench quicker and sooner than Gunnar Solskjaer would like to have done. It's an excellent finish from Tielemans. Been another terrific year. But it's really poor from a United point of view. I felt at times they've not got tight enough in midfield and he was just allowed to roam through the middle of the pitch before getting his shot away. Perez. Vardy, just behind Castagna, Maguire, Arshia, Teles, all bright and ample fun for company, Teles really at his best when he's given open ground to run into and Leicester's done a very good job of ensuring that's not really happened so far. Bruno Fernandes is already warming up. Super So on shoot. Well read by Alex Tellers. He plays a lovely one too. Brown Matic is away. Fred doesn't get across. Lindelof backs off. To travel a long way. You see Lindelof, the run of Vardy attracts him. It just opens up. Two 
Peter Van Zee still. Really a young player, 23 years of age, but it feels as though he's been around for some time. He was part of a very young Monaco side under Thierry Henry a couple of years ago. He wasn't considered a huge, huge signing when he arrived at Leicester City, but he's been one of the stars in the Premier League over the past couple of seasons. So consistent. And able to play anywhere in that midfield. He's a genuine box-to-box -box midfielder. He can do all aspects of the game. He seems to play every single week as well. At the moment, with Leicester's injury problems, he has to. Pogba. Greenwood. Fred. Could open up for the shot, but he was closed down by Ndidi. Tellez. Andre Mariner agrees. He got a bit of help from his assistant. You saw that initially. It's a cut from Mark Albrighton. See the replay. is over the free kick. <laughs> for a target, but so you got there first. Now you do have the corner, and I wonder, in the back of Onigola Solskjaer's mind, is how long can Paul Pogba last in this game? Yeah, I mean, you have to be careful with him. He wasn't really injured again. I'll swing it from Tellez this time. So you there before Maguire. Ball Brighton is giving the ball away to Greenwood. Skating into the penalty area beyond Fafana. So Unchu and then Ndidi acrobatically with the clearance. Now Alex Tellez, he goes for goal and it whistles some way wide. He's a bit better from United. Mason Greenwood, I think, has been probably United's best performer today. He's been one of the few that's been right on their game. Catches that really sweetly. Alex Tellez. Oh, it was close. Uh, who was Portuguese Cup winner with Porto last season. At the moment, heading out here with Manchester United at the quarter-final stage. of course were knocked out in the semi-finals by Chelsea last summer here is Vardy released by Ian Acho in between Maguire and he puts it wide what a chance for Jamie Vardy and that could have sealed Leicester's place in the semi-finals not played well giving the ball away again it's Greenwood this time and this would have put the seal on it I'm sure that would have been the end of it not sure United would have come back his goal scoring record hasn't been great of late and he snatches at the chance and pulls it wide he knows it's a glorious opportunity to fire Leicester into the semi-finals one in 15 games which came here in the win against Liverpool that was uh, due to a defensive mix-up Jamie Vardy to bury that sort of opportunity but he's not scored in the FA Cup for nearly three years although he's not played too many ties in that time Matic put out by Evans now Tielemans Iheanacho to play in the game at their own tempo at the moment Castagna comfortable aren't they moving it nicely he's struggling to get a grip of the game Iheanacho there's a real poise about Leicester at the moment we 
often see this when they're at their best under Brendan Rodgers. Rodgers has lost 11 of his 14 meetings with Manchester United, but ahead here today. It only belonged before his changes for United. Barney again. The nutmeg on Lindelof this time. And Castagna in support. Now Perez. United really rocking here. And Didi. All Brighton. The cross looking for Vardy. And defended well by Lindelof. Maguire's clearance. Here is Pogba. And now Tielemans. Doesn't get hold of it this time. They can't continue like this. It's one way traffic. Leicester looking likely to extend the lead and United get back in it. What a chance that was for Jamie Vardy. I'm sure it won't be too long until we see the likes of Bruno Fernandes and Edinson Cavani, but if United aren't careful, it could be a lost cause by the time they come on. Michael's clearance. Now for Fana. Perez. Vardy and Ianacho ahead of it. But Perez goes himself again. And it's over the top, but Leicester continually have Manchester United backpedalling here. Another great big hole in the midfield. Wan Bissaka dropping off. Lindelof backing off. Only until he gets what within 25 yards of goal before anyone tries to confront him. Van der Beek. Leicester with 10 attempts on goal now. Double the number that Manchester United have managed as Martial is taken down, and it will be a free kick awarded by Andre Mariner. Look far more threatening Leicester going forward. Piece of run from Marcel. Catches the hip of Johnny Evans. Montreal has been a peripheral figure at times. Manchester United are about to make four changes. Shaw, Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay and Edinson Cavani. That tells you everything you need to know about what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thinks about what he's seen so far. Alex Tellez over the free kick. Wire at the far post, but it's beyond him and Pogba and everybody else. Well, there are very few players in the United side who have earned the right to stay on, in all honesty. Matic is the first player to come off. Then it's Paul Pogba, which was anticipated due to his lack of fitness. of course setting up the equalizing goal van der Beek and Tales are the two other players who have come off so Shaw will slot in at left back Bruno Fernandes will be in behind Martial and Cavani will also be offering that threat in attack yeah he'll go up top I presume Martial will go out to the left hand side Done it again though, Donny van der Beek. Oh, he contributed to that first goal with he, oh, he left it for Mason Greenwood. But he hasn't imposed himself on the game again. But he's not been alone in that. In the Manchester United side. Paul Pogba, of course, is somebody maybe with a slight mitigation due to his lack of football in recent times. 
Van de Beek, who used to play for Ajax, would really dominate games. Now Martial, Greenwood, Tomanet. Cross was deflected off so Unchu. And United have a corner with 25 minutes to play. He's been a regular goal scorer this season, Scott McTominay. He's got himself forward from midfield. Not something that Matic or Fred do particularly well. But he makes good runs. Gets up in support of his strikers, gets himself into the box. Bruno Fernandez with the corner. Met by Maguire, but all bright and all clear. Greenwood. Confirmation of the changes. At the top of your picture as the crossing is again deflected, but this time gathered by Schmeichel. Bruno Fernandez scored the winning goal against Liverpool in the fourth round. See, I think Donny van der Beek just needs to watch Bruno Fernandez, the way he dominates, wants the ball. Tomane has lost out to Perez. Tielemans. Good covering though by Fred this time. Bruno Fernandez characteristically demanding the ball and here is Greenwood, Wambasaka in support. Fred. Shaw. The crossing is over the head of Greenwood. It'll come out to Wambasaka. Now McTominay helped on towards Greenwood again. Wambasaka. And it hits Cavani. And the final touch was off so unto us. Another corner. Well, already. The impetus in the, in the attack now from United. Bodies in the box. Getting numbers forward. Look at Wambasaka's position. And Leicester suddenly find themselves on the back foot. Bruno Fernandes with the corner. Here is Shaw. Flicked on by McTominay and... Routine for Schmeichel this time. Giannaccio. He's held up by Juan Bissaka, but... Leicester may just be content to try and play on the counter-attack now. Jamie Vardy may be mulling over that chance. He had to seal it. of Leicester's seven Premier League defeats have come here they're aiming to avoid third cup exit at home this season after Slavia Prague recently ended their run in the Europa League and earlier this season Arsenal beat them in the League Cup Ryan's just about to get a yellow card I think for kicking the ball away and there's Klitsch's ankles, but just after that, Old Ryan smashes the ball away. Tomine. Confirmation of that booking for Mark Albrighton. Dennis Pratt is currently in conversation with Brendan Rogers inside the Leicester technical area. Bruno Fernandez. Cavani. Shaw. Fred. Ambasaka. It's targeted up by Sionchu. We'll set up here for a fascinating final 20 minutes or so as Inacho takes it down superbly. Looks for Vardy, but this time he's muscled off it by Maguire. The game's so stretched, and Leicester are a threat on the counter. Can afford to leave those two up top. United are throwing bodies forward there's going to be space on the counter for Leicester Nacho is penalised this time it was a fantastic piece of skill there to take that ball down out of the sky Maguire
McTominay. Bruno Fernandez is found by Fred and suddenly seem to be more possibilities here for Manchester United. Bruno's cross in and Johnny Evans on the stretch sends it behind for another corner. He's demanding the ball, Bruno Fernandes. He's getting on it, finding space. He's always looking to play forward and play a killer pass. Inside the final 20 minutes. Bruno Fernandes with the delivery. This time it's Ndidi who heads the ball away. Anderson was steaming forward for the quick throw-in. Mounted sky and a dramatic game unfolding here in front of us. McTominay. Now Greenwood, Seonchu coming in from behind and he won the ball. It's a dangerous challenge. To go through Mason Greenwood to get to the ball. Telemans. Now all Brighton. Lindelof is aware that Ian Asher was in the vicinity. He's been United's sharpest player though, Mason Greenwood. Right from the off. It was an indication of the very desperate situation Manchester United were in that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer chose to make four changes at once and um, McTominay is penalised for bundling over Iose Perez That's a yellow card for him as well slightly over eager to get the ball back for his team didn't get anywhere near the ball if United lose this game any realistic hope of domestic silverware will have gone for another season. We'll have to concentrate on the Europa League. They face Granada in the quarter-finals. Dennis Pratt will replace Iose Perez. He's not played the Belgian international since damaging his hamstring in the Third round victory at Stoke City in early January. Has been selected for the Belgian squad for the upcoming international break. And Leicester will be very pleased to see him back. Yep, with a couple of weeks now with the international break, it might be that Madison's not too far away as well. Crucial stage of the season. James Justin for the rest of the campaign and Harvey Barnes may also face a race against time to get fit potentially for England and the European Championships Bruno Fernandes now Shaw Cavani makes the run to the near post and the final ricochet there was off Shaw just a low the ball into the box to wait for United to get bodies in the area. Far more attacking though since they made the changes United. United have won 12 of their last 15 away ties in the FA Cup. Well, they were beaten in quarter-final games at both Chelsea and Wolverhampton Wanderers and be another defeat upcoming here in the Midlands at the King Power Stadium. Wambasaka. Greenwood. Shaw. And Maguire given the room to let fly but it was always heading wide yeah, that's ambitious that's a long way out as well from Harry Maguire he's allowed to come forward but still a good 35 yards out long from 
Michael this time. And Basaka. McTominay. Bruno Fernandez. He was caught there. And there will be a yellow card for Johnny Evans. Can't have too many arguments. I think he just slips, doesn't he? That's why he makes contact with Bruno Fernandes. McTominay. The yellow cards are racking up for both sides in the second half. Must have dropped right off now. Not United have the ball deep. They've given the ball away. Yeah. Really unable to spring the counter attack this time. Bruno Fernandes. United with three quarters of the ball in the last ten minutes since they made those changes. They still trail. Greenwood coming back to win the ball, and now United look to spring the attack themselves but it was a poor ball forward from Fred, here is Fafana all Brighton from Didi Castagna Pratt try to Wiggle beyond McTominay on two or three occasions before eventually drawing the free kick. Good play from Pratt. Gets his team up the pitch. And for a period where United had a lot of the ball. No rush to take it either. Chancing out this last 13. That's a bit of injury time. United in a seventh successive quarter final, but at the moment. Their FA Cup run is ending here. All Brighton over the free kick. Brighton in beyond Henderson and headed in by Ian Acho. And Leicester City are surely heading towards their first FA Cup semi final since 1982. Once again, another goal which was very poorly defended by Manchester United. It was, that should be it. Ian Acho at the double. He just goes in unmarked at the far post. Tommy's the closest to him, but it's allowed to drift all the way through the box. Nobody gets tight, but Tommy doesn't win the header. Difficult one for Henderson, it comes at him so close. He's in rich scoring form right now. Looks like he's going to see Leicester through to the semi-finals. Well, James Madison, quick to celebrate. He may be anticipating a return to fitness in time for the semi-finals. For Bruno Fernandes, another route towards a trophy for Manchester United. Could be ending here. Have 11 minutes in which to score two goals and force extra time. See some famous comebacks from United. This will be up there. Well, the most recent victory for Leicester against United. Saw the Foxes come from 3 1 down to win 5 3, but. Only going to Solskjaer's team have really shot themselves in the foot at times with the manner of their defending. Well, they're up against a, a front pair who've been in good form. And Bardi perhaps not so in front of goal, but he's assisted his teammate up top, Ian Acho, who has been in sparkling goal-scoring form. It's now 
nine goals in nine games for Kelechi Iheanacho. But from a United point of view, it was a good delivery, great delivery from All Brighton, but somebody's got to attack it. Someone's got to get tight to Iheanacho at the far post. I mean, there's no one within three or four yards of him. Tom is the one that went to get the ball, but he's the nearest to Iheanacho as well. It's tight to Iheanacho, he deals with it. The Chowdhury will be on shortly to try and help Leicester see this one through. And unless we have a remarkable comeback, it will be Leicester against Southampton in the FA Cup semi-final. And both clubs would regard that as a wonderful opportunity. produce one of their famous comebacks here at the moment doesn't look likely there were better signs for them when they made that host of changes but once again defensively they have simply not been good enough Wambasaka and their 14 month run of 29 games without defeat away from home domestically is also on the verge of coming to an end Bruno Fernandes given away by Greenwood Su and Chu in terms of clear cut chances either side of the changes Matt Leicester have had far more yeah they have they still a threat on the counter with those two up top United are committing bodies forward they're trying to get back into the game mm. Leicester when they turn possession over they've got options when they go forward that might change now to everybody the player who was coming off and the Chowdhury is a perennial replacement at times like this for Leicester City who have reached the most FA Cup finals without ever winning the trophy runners up four times but we are heading towards the semi-finals here for the first time in 39 years you can smile Jamie Vardy his team three one up he knows he had a glorious chance to get on the score sheet himself and has to drag it wide credit to Brendan Rodgers and the players around Jamie Vardy that even though the goals have dried up for him they are still finding a way well, Ian Acho is finding a way as simple as that he's been superb hasn't he it's the goal again and it's allowed to travel a long way but Tommy has to do better he has to get his head on this and if he doesn't get his head on it then he has to get tighter to Iheanacho. That was a, an easy header from him. And when we look at replays like that, Safana shepherds the ball behind. We're trying to see whose run was blocked off, who couldn't get there. In that case, nobody. No, exactly. He's, he's just allowed to travel a long way. And he's at the far post with nobody near him. And he's in great goal scoring form. Fred is now making his way off. Manchester United play their final card. Armad has come on to replace him. A young player who scored a spectacular goal against Milan in the Europa League at Old Trafford recently in the 1 1 draw. 18 year old Ivorian signed from Atalanta. The attackers on the pitch now to, to do it, United. Greenwood, Cavani, Martial, Ahmad, Bruno. There's Ahmad. He's lost out, Iheanacho, Tielemans. Leicester don't have the pace of Vardy in behind now, but for Brighton, we'll look for Iheanacho. 
looking for a second successive hat trick but he was offside this time as is customary we wait until they become active before putting the flag up Liverpool were the last side to beat Manchester United away from home January 2020 29 games that run is five minutes away from being consigned to the history books Spins does well to avoid the corner Bruno Fernandes Shaw Tomine. So quick to get bodies around the ball. The football is very pleasing on the eye, but it's underpinned by a real work ethic as United get the free kick. The incentive was there at half time when the draw was made. And avoided Chelsea and Man City. It was Southampton in the semi final. It's Leicester that have taken advantage of that. Saka Montomine Ahmad and Maguire was caught by Chowdhury I think he was determined to fire a shot on goal but in the end he was happy to wait for the free kick and he waited Andre Mariner first one was the foul there tried to give the advantage to Harry Maguire but it wasn't forthcoming and if there is to be a comeback this needs to go in Kasper Schmeichel has not really been tested since half time Bruno Fernandes will strike this and this time Schmeichel is tested that's an excellent save he's not had a lot to do Kasper Schmeichel I'll tell you what this is at the top draw it's like it's fun it's way in the top corner Bruno Fernandes picks out Chowdhury at the near post now Greenwood has lost out Pratt Shaw is back to cover. Victor Lindelof is just beginning to hobble around and United have made all of their changes. Leicester with more attempts on goal, more on target. Stania and Didi. And Tielemans. Once again, they play their way out of trouble very stylishly. I think even the most avid of United fans could argue that Leicester deserved this today I think over the, the course of the game they've been the better side Tielemans wins from Ndidi but he's done well to find Castagna these two sides will meet again in the Premier League of May which could be a key game in the race for the top four two or three games before the end of the season Chowdhury we are into the 90th minute and what has been very dispiriting day for Manchester United but Leicester City deserve all of the credit for that I mean the beneficiaries of some very poor defending at times but a very expansive outlook has helped to create that pressure he was in actual once again he's ridden the challenge of both Maguire and then McTominay before Maguire intervenes well, they've just been better they have been better 
But United have tried to respond. They've made all the changes. Since making the changes, they've been better United. They've improved. But over the course, I think Leicester have deserved it. They're a bit sharper, a bit more intent about their play. I'm sure the Gunnar Solskjaer won't want to make excuses, but it's been a hectic schedule for them. And they have looked a bit tired, haven't they? Well, in England indicating there will be a minimum of four more minutes. Victorious on Milan, but humbled in Leicester looks to be the story this week for Manchester United as McTominay gets the free kick. Bruno Fernandes. Saka. You know, Fernandez again and that's for Wamba Saka is behind Ahmad and Lechi Iheanacho has been a real pest for Manchester United throughout the day. Deserved his two goals. No doubt. Pick up the man of the match award. Right from the off, he isolates himself up against Harry Maguire. Another opportunity to win a trophy slips by for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. All in for the Europa League now. Short. Greenwood. Looking for Martial and did well to win the header and it was a sharp save from Schmeichel in the end. Not a lot of pace on the cross, so it's difficult for Martial to get the necessary power. Hangs in the air. Probably off target anyway. United will be focusing on the road to Gdansk in Europe, but it's all about the road to Wembley for Leicester. Nancho conceding the free kick. Fernandez. Stanley just getting the touch. Hamza Chowdhury. By Linda Love. McTominay. giving the ball away on so many occasions as they have done today recently and actually some of the times not even under any real pressure either you know, Tommy's in acres of space there now Tielemans Castagna Moving into the semi-finals at a time when they are without two of their most creative players, James Madison and Harvey Barnes, Ricardo Pereira. Also somebody they really missed in their slide out of the top four at the end of last season. He's not playing today and if they can get a couple of those bigger names fit for the semi-final, they will really look to relish the occasion. It's another turnover. Pratt almost found Ian Acho. Bruno Fernandez, Cavani, McTominay, Romad. And it's all over. Leicester City are into the FA Cup semi finals for the first time in 39 years.
beautiful music, scarves being waved, real excitement in the Wembley air. Manchester United supporters, well those of a certain age anyway, have seen them attempt to win and indeed end up winning the lot in football. Only one thing matters today, and that's winning and retaining the League Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, the teams will now be presented to today's chief guests. Time for the team presentations to today's chief guests. Lord Mawinney, the chairman of the Football League, a position he's held since 2003, but he's stepping down on March the 15th. And Martin Thomas, who's the director of Molson Coors UK Limited, of which Carling, the cup sponsors, is a division. Patrice Evra wearing the captain's armband for Manchester United today. Ryan Giggs, as I'm sure you know, is out with a broken arm that he suffered in the league game between these teams just over two weeks ago. Gary Neville is a substitute. And Rio Ferdinand is injured with a back problem again. Just saw the United mascot there, seven-year-old Charlie Simpson, who was chosen because of his fabulous efforts in fundraising to aid the disaster appeal in Haiti. Villa's mascot is six-year-old Ben Clay from Droitwich Spa. His identical twin Oliver suffers from cerebral palsy and attends one of the Acorns hospices, whose name Villa proudly display on their shirts. An admirable wave of sponsorship cash that from the Villa chairman, Randy Lerner. It looks tense. Doesn't he always before big games of football? Definitely more yellow and green than red, white and black here today. First of all, of course, we'll have the national anthem. And today it's going to be sung by Camilla Kersley. Kerslake, a 21-year-old classical singer from London. She was in form, let's hope these players are today. Stylian Petrov is the Villa captain who will lead his players down the line of United opposition. Hit after a virus and uh, exchanging hugs with fellow Bulgarian Dimitar Berbatov, who will be delighted at getting a starting place for United today. And there's Dave Tatlock of Two Parrot. As Gary mentioned earlier, told he'd never walk again after being paralysed by shrapnel in Afghanistan in July 2008. A Manchester United season ticket holder and a wonderful moment for him. Let's take a look at the teams. The biggest decision that Martin O'Neill had to make was on his goalkeeper, and he's gone with Brad Friedel, a League Cup winner and man of the match with Blackburn in 2002. Brad Guzan, therefore, on the bench, and unlucky having played in every round and played a major role in Villa being here. Warnock, Milner, Downing and Heskey are all in the England squad to play Egypt here on Wednesday. Two others, Akbon Lahore and Ashley Young, will be hoping to make the final squad named for the World Cup. No doubt about the United headline. Wayne Rooney is only a substitute, a move that hasn't impressed some of the United fans I've been talking to, but then Sir Alex Ferguson has always been about winning trophies rather than friends. No van der Sar either, so it's Kushak in goal and Berbatov and Owen up front. Remarkably, this is Michael Owen's first Wembley final with all of his major moments with Liverpool coming at Cardiff's Millennium Stadium. 16, one of those moments for Michael Owen. Came in 2001. 
2003, rather, when he scored for Liverpool in a win against Manchester United. 2001, he, like Rooney today, sat on the bench, an unused substitute. Rooney, I'm sure, will get his chance before the afternoon is done. Mark Lawrenson is, of course, alongside me. The first thing to ask you about, Mark, is your opinion on that United team selection. Well, just really surprised, Guy. The, the form that Rooney's in, you'd argue, the, the form of his life, and he really wanted a, a real serious chance to win the competition. you think he would have started. But I suppose it's the insurance policy on the bench. I just find it very interesting that, that both teams, actually, are going to adopt the same formation today. So uh, that would be certainly interesting. But Rooney on the bench, I think a massive surprise, like the rest of the country. Two teams both setting up 4 4 2 with two wingers in the starting lineups. We just saw that Phil Dowd is today's referee, his first major final, his first game at the new Wembley. Got the phone call at the start of the month and described himself as being as pleased as punch. So we're all set for the 50th League Cup final. Rather fittingly, it involves the current holders and the team that won the very first League Cup, Aston Villa, back in 1961 when they beat Rotherham United over two legs. This is all about today. It will be won today, whether we have to go into extra time or indeed all the way to penalties as Manchester United did last season. This is Aston Villa against Manchester United. Emil Heskey knows all about winning League Cups. And he's managed it four times. He scored in the final in 1997 for Leicester against Middlesbrough. And he might just get a chance very early on with Villa getting a free kick. Ashley Young is going to take it. James Collins has made his way forward with Richard Dunn too. Young delivers powerfully. And it's met acrobatically by Everett. Villa force a corner inside a minute. Carlos Cuellar has joined the attacking party. Scored against United just 18 days ago in the Premier League. That one's headed away by Raphael. Jason Park gives Michael Owen something to chase token effort at putting pressure on Stephen Warnock and Stuart Downing scorer of two goals in Villa's demolition of Burnley a week ago delighted to get his first England call last night in nearly a year he was a League Cup winner six years ago although he didn't take to the field in Middlesbrough's win over Bolton in Cardiff Brad Friedel's last appearance in this competition January 2006 in Blackburn Rovers semi-final defeat against Manchester United brought back in because of his experience and Mark I think simply because Villa want to make sure they have every chance of winning and that's, yes. that's no disrespect meant to Brad Guzer not at all and he is a better goalkeeper isn't he Milner McBon Lahore slipped made it easier for Nemanja Vidic Vidic only playing his second game of 2010. Made his reappearance on Tuesday against West Ham. Missed 11 games with a mystery nerve problem in his leg. Johnny Evans winning his second consecutive League Cup final. And Thomas Kushak playing in his first. He didn't get onto the field last year against Spurs. Ben Foster was, of course, the penalty-saving hero for Manchester United, thanks to his iPod, rather famously. Here's Darren Fletcher. Now Jason Park. Owen and Berbatov calling for the ball to be delivered early. When it was delivered, it was straight to Stylian Petrov. Downing tries to switch it over to Ashley Young. Switching will be a feature for Aston Villa. I watched them against Burnley last week, Mark, and... Downing and Young were constantly swapping sides. Yeah, and I think also add Milner as well to the to the two you mentioned. He can play down either side as well. James Milner, who scored in his last three League Cup games. Ashley Young helps it on for 
Gabi Agbonlahor has got the pace and he's getting away from Vidic. Agbonlahor goes down. It's a penalty for Aston Villa. Three and a half minutes into the final. And Vidic was always struggling. It looked for a second when Agbonlahor actually got in front of him that he was going to go through on goal. And then he seemed to miscontrol the ball a little bit. In the end, I don't think Vidic can have any argument about the fact that he's caught him. The outstretched leg is over. Well, he's got a hold of the shirt, the leg comes across, it's two fouls in one. Yeah. No debate about that one. I'll tell you what would have been interesting, I wasn't quite sure whether he was actually onside when the ball was played to Agbon the Hall. No doubt we're going to look at that after. No further punishment for Vidic, which is interesting. Yeah. Just a word in his ear from Phil Dowd. Nevertheless, Manchester United may be about to be punished by James Milner. From the spot on the spot to score Aston Villa have the advantage in the 2010 Carling Cup final and the manager is the calmest Villa fan of all it's a good penalty isn't it very very well taken but the, you know, the argument what's the, what's the law guy denying a goal scoring opportunity Surely he was denying a goal-scoring opportunity, so he should be sent off. We don't want to see players sent off, but he should have been sent off. At the very least, it should have been a yellow card yeah. for Vidic. Aston Villa right now won't be bothered too much by that, because they have the lead through James Milner. His ninth goal of the season. And he has been in sparkling scoring form in the League Cup. What about United? A slip from Berbatov. As they look to reply straight away. I just had a feeling that Milner may have slipped a little bit as he struck the penalty. That didn't affect him, did it? Well, there will be quite a bit of that. The rain, I think, is just falling very, very slightly. Well, uh, apparently Groundsman said that if the input that had the bubble on it overnight, the game would have been in doubt. Well, you might have seen the England Island rugby match from Twickenham yesterday, played in a downpour, and it was a mud bath by the end, but the Wembley Grand Staff reacted quickly. They got the cover in, and the cover has done its job. Here's Michael Owen. A job to do for Manchester United now. Patrice Evra. Berbatov. That's Carrick. Off balance as he struck. He looked down to the pitch, but I don't think that was much to do with the turf underneath him. Yeah, good setup play as well by Berbatov, wasn't it? Yeah, see? Oh, it's tight, isn't it? He's, he's on. He's just on. Agbon Lahore. Played on by United's captain today, Patrice Evra. And Vidic has two grabs at him outside the box and then gets hold of a whole chunk of shirt once they're inside. Well, there was no argument, there was no protest. Probably a sense of relief he stayed on. Agbon Lahore again. James Milner again. Stuart Downing breaking forward. He has been given offside. That's the first switch we've seen. But Downing just went too soon. Pretty clear. Well, we often talk about these occasions needing an early goal to get them going. And that's exactly what we've had. Martin O'Neill has said that winning a trophy is the ultimate. Winning the first is the most difficult. You can feel his nervousness, can't you? Yeah. Pretty sure he just wants to get up and patrol the line, doesn't he? He was recalling this week how the late great Brian Clough was in raptures after winning the Anglo-Scottish Cup in 1976 with Nottingham Forest simply because it was the first and it was the springboard. I explained to the viewers what it was as well. <laughs> Before my time, unfortunately. Well, it won't change the way Manchester United play, will it? Because they're forever pushing forward, as everybody knows, under just Alex Ferguson. So it'll be sort of business as usual. Here's Berbatov trying to help it on to Owen. Berbatov then had to put the brakes on to collect from Carrick. Downing is well and truly mugged by Luis Antonio Valencia. It could be a free kick for Villa. That's why. Aston Villa have yet to taste defeat in this calendar year. 1 7, drawn 5 in 2010. 
really decision for Phil Dow to have to make, but it was a pretty simple one giving the penalty. It was the uh, he just told the players as well to go and pop the balloons. Look, <laughs> that's what that's why the delay is extra duty. Jason Park and Carlos Cuellar have been uh, running around. There is still one on there. Yellow and green balloons, interestingly, from the United supporters. It's not Norwich's big day out. Lidic getting stuck into Heskey. It's kept in by Raphael, but given away to Warnock. Likewise then to Fletcher. No, he doesn't find Carrick. Petrov nipped in to win it. Valencia. Covering was James Collins. Another slip. There have been two or three. It was Johnny Evans who lost his footing that time. Ashley Young. Pass G Sung Park to deliver. Blocked by Evans. Here's Carrick. Should have done better, shouldn't he, Ashley Young? He had loads of time and space as well. Richard Dunn with half an eye on Berbatov and then looks back towards his goalkeeper and sees that Brad Friedel is in the right place. Here's Milner. Quayer. Awful pass. He was looking for Petrov. It was a nervous kind of pass and it's Michael Owen getting away and brought down by James Collins who is going to be cautioned here. Free kick for United. And I think Stillian Petrov saying to the referee, well, hold on, where's the consistency? I mean, there's no doubt it should be, but there's also it started from a really poor pass from uh, Carlos Cuellar as well. They had so much time, probably had too much time, in fact. Yellow card for James Collins. Michael Owen getting into his stride. He shrugged off one challenge. He wasn't going to hurdle that one. Michael Carrick will try to curl one into the right area for United. He hasn't got it right either. Milner. Only had Bon Lahore ahead of him. He's passed now by Ashley Young. Millie, Millie. Downing's making a break down the middle. Young. Pressed by Carrick. Jason Park. Evans. was well dealt with by Collins. Here's Petrov. And he's sweeping it into Stuart Downing. It's pretty clear that Villa have started the brighter of the two teams. There's a nice urgency about them, isn't there? Milner. Downing. Spanish Luis Antonio Valencia, but going the wrong way as far as Villa were concerned. Here's Emil Heskey letting it run for Agbon Lahore. Vidic to Kushak. Had to hurry with that. Fletcher. Richard Dunn has been dispossessed by Berbatov. Berbatov breaking into the box. Dunn had to get it right. Michael Owen follows up. And United are level. Never mind Wayne Rooney, Michael Owens on the field to score. Lost when it's a question. Wolves 2 0 Crystal Palace. In terms of experimentation. Getting that from YouTube. Material and refine it. That well, thank you.